Hello, good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Rufino. Good evening, Claudia. Good evening, Luis. Good, good evening. Good evening, Maricela. Good evening, Estela. Good evening, Patricia. Good evening, Luis. Okay, today uh, we finish our first week, right? Vamos a terminar la primera semana hoy. Felicidades a todos por haber pues terminado la primera semana. Este, evening, por evening, su esfuerzo. Este, thank you for your effort. Thank you for connecting to these classes online. And um, I don't know if you have a little bit of feedback or any opinion, any thoughts about the classes. If you would like to do something else, something different next week, uh, we can do it. We can like prepare something. If you will be like interested in uh, practicing like more grammar, more exercises, more examples. I don't know if you have any thoughts and if you don't, it's okay, no problem. ¿Alguna sugerencia, alguna opinión para la próxima semana? ¿O todo está bien? ¿Todo está bien? ¿No suggestions? Ok. Entonces, vamos a empezar. Déjenme ver aquí. Una cosa para, antes de empezar, one thing before starting is like, I don't know if you have any question or if you have uh, um, any, if you have completed the the um, the exercises from the from the platform, have you completed them or not yet? Have you finished? Yes. Yes. Teacher. Okay. Yes. For week. Teacher. Yes, Estela. Uh, I finished two lessons. But, uh, I, well, un mensaje que no lo haya completado. Pero ya la completé. Ah, ya la completé. Okay, you have completed it. Okay, very good. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, you have to complete the exercises. I guess that today is the last day to complete them. So please try to complete them, right? If you have any question about the exercises, uh, try to, well, let me know, right? Either through the WhatsApp group or also here during the classes, right? You can ask me, a teacher, I have a question about uh, this exercise. I don't understand it, uh, et cetera, right? Uh, so you will be able to check it. Now, for example, these are the exercises. This is what you have to complete. And everything has to be completed for today, okay? So this is what we are going to, to check. Actually, we are, we, if you want to, we can check it, right? If you want to, we can verify if it is correct or if it is not at the end of the class or right now. But if you, if you, don't, if you don't have any doubt or any, any problem with completing it, uh, or completing these exercises in the platform, we can continue. Do you have any problem, any question about these exercises? No questions? Everything's okay? Everything's clear? Okay, so they are really easy actually because we have like uh, different options, multiple options that uh, which uh, we have to choose. So there is not like complication in these exercises. So if you don't have any question, everything is okay. You have completed them. So we can continue with the class. And yesterday we were studying about used to, right? What is, uh, what do we use used to, that, that uh, verb? ¿Para qué lo utilizamos el used to? Para hablar de acciones pasadas que no, que solíamos hacer antes. Exactly, for uh, activities that we used to do before and we don't do anymore, right? We stopped doing that. For example, we have there, right? Uh, the example, when I was younger, I used to go out and dance every weekend. Now, I like to spend my weekends in my house, watching movies and doing house chores. And you, what do you used to do before, okay? So that's what we have to do right now. 
Um, let's see. Claudia Iraeta, tell me something that you used to do before and you don't do any anymore. Just stop doing. I used to go to the to the church. <laughs> you used to go to the church uh -huh. and you don't go to the church anymore. No, I know. And, and why don't you go to the church anymore? Because uh, el horario se dice. Yeah, the schedule or the time. The time. The time, okay. The time. You don't have time for to go to the church. No, no. only Sundays. Only on Sundays. Okay, but that's okay. No problem. So you used to go before and did you used to go alone or with your family or? With family. With your family, with your parents or with your? Parents. With your parents. Uh, um, uh, he, uh, my brother. And your brother. And now that only your parents go to the church? Yes, my yes. mom usually. Usually, okay. But on Sundays, the whole family goes to the church. Yes. Okay, very good. So she used to go to the church, but she only goes on Sundays nowadays. Very good. Thank you, Claudia. And you. let me see. We have um, we have many people connected already. Let me see. Liliana Sanchez, are you there, Liliana? Yes. Okay, Liliana. Tell me something that you used to do before and you don't do any anymore. Just to mm. practice a little bit. I used to watch a lot of Korean series. Mm -hmm. Yes, in one day I could watch like 10 chapters or 12. <laughs> yes, but now I don't do it because I don't want to waste too much time. You don't want to waste so much time watching the Ramos, right? Those are yeah. the series, right? Okay. And yeah. Now you still watch uh, the dramas or you don't watch them anymore? Sometimes, but just one chapter during the week or just on the weekends, but not like before. Not like before, like 10 chapters. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like binge watching, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, very good. So and now what do you do with your time, with your free time? Or do you study? Reading, or... reading a lot. I yeah. read a lot. <laughs> That, yeah. That's good. That's good. So you have changed the doramas for books. Yes, exactly. And okay. I work and I go to the gym and I receive classes. I do a lot of things. <laughs> you do a lot. You're a very busy person. Yes. Okay, very good. So she used to watch a lot of doramas and she used, and now, nowadays, she's doing different activities. So thank you very much, Liliana, for your information, for sharing that information with us. So that was uh, that was something that we used to, or actually no, not we used to not. We studied yesterday the form used to to say something that we used to do and we don't do anymore. Now the acti the homework, the little homework that we had yesterday is that you had to investigate about countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Uh, did you investigate a little bit of that, or or do you have an idea? Yes, right? It's really easy, right? Because that's from basic, right? Now we're in intermediate. So um, do you know what a countable noun is or what is the difference? What is the difference between countable and uncountable nouns? Countable noun. It can be people, play, things that can be counted. And uncountable noun refer to items, topics, concepts, qualities that can be coded. For example, water, air, pollution, weather, etc. Exactly, very good. So countable nouns are things that we can count and countable nouns are things that we cannot count basically, right? Like air, pollution, traffic right all um some things that she mentioned that thank you tatiana 
for uh, showing that concept. So actually that is uh, what we are going to study a little bit today, right? Because we have two topics for today. Let me see, adverbs of quantity. That's the topic, the first topic for today. And we have countable and uncountable nouns. Now, what is a noun? A noun is a word used to identify any of a class of people, places, or things, right? That's a noun. And a noun can be a cake, can be a proper noun. Omaha, for example, Juan Perez is a noun. School bus is a noun. Shoes, traffic, all of that is a noun. And we have countable and uncountable nouns, right? A countable noun is nouns that can be counted. We can add S at the end of them. That's something that we have to pay attention. We can add S. Podemos agregarle una S al final. Si le podemos agregar una S, es porque probablemente sea un nombre contable, a countable noun. For example, we have apples there, right? One apple, two apples, five apples. So we can see that we add an S at the end. That's a countable noun. And we have an uncountable noun. Nouns that cannot be counted. It is not something that you can quantify, like milk, money, rice. So we have, uh, we can count it, but in a different rate, in a different way, right? So for example, milk is not countable, money, rice. For that reason, we have measurement units, right? We need a standard unit for measurement to make our judgment more reliable and, and accurate. So we have a gallon of milk, a cart of, of milk, a pint, a cup of milk, a tablespoon, an ounce, a pound. So we have measurement units for uncountable nouns. So I wanted to um, point out that the measurement units because sometimes we get confused, right? But we can count coffee, teacher, a cup of coffee, or we can count milk, right? But now we can count the cup or we can count the pine or the gallon. That's what we can count. But milk in general, we cannot count it, right? Water, we cannot count it. A bowl of rice, for example, in the previous image, we have a bowl of rice. We can count bowl, bowl of rice, right? Like one bowl, two bowls, three bowls, but rice in general, no, we cannot count it. So that's uncountable. And we have here, uh, for example, uh, we have different, this, these are sentences actually, in which we can see countable and uncountable nouns. These sentences talk about or our city, right? Because this, um, this subject or this topic is related to the city, right? So the buses, for example, it says the buses are old and slow and they can cause too much pollution in cities with less pollution, people are healthier. Buses, buses are, is, is countable or uncountable buses? Countable. Countable, right? Because it's pluralized, we can pluralize it. Pollution, is it countable or uncountable? Uncountable. Uncountable. Cities, countable or uncountable? Uncountable. uncountable. Countable. Countable. Exactly. Yeah. Countable. Yes, exactly. People. People is uncountable or countable? Uncountable. Uncountable. Uncountable? Countable. 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 Exactly. We can count people, right? You are many people, but I can count you. We are like 20 right now, so I can count people. Uh, persons, right? Uh, people is the plural of persons, right? Instead of two persons, I can say two people. So that's correct. And mm -hmm. uh, the next one says, there are too many cars. All the cars, taxis, and buses are a danger of bicycles. There is too much traffic. Cars, is countable or uncountable? Countable. Exactly. Contable. And taxis? Countable. 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 And buses? We already have that, right? Countable. Yeah. And bicycles? <laughs> Uncountable. Uncountable. And traffic? Uncountable. 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 Traffic, we cannot count. We can count cars, right? Taxes, buses. But traffic is uncountable. And the last one, it says there should be fewer cars. But I think that the biggest problem is parking. There just isn't enough parking. So problem is countable or uncountable? Uncountable. Problem? 
We can count so problems or we cannot count. It's countable, right? It's countable. Okay. Problem, we can count. I have countable. one problem, I have two problems. Yes. And parking, is it countable or uncountable? Uncountable. Uncountable. Parking, we can, we can count parking spaces. Spaces, right, to park. But parking in general, no, it's uncountable. And here we have the... Uh, the, the answers, let's say, right, the buses are countable, people are countable, pollution uncountable, cities countable. We have everything that we have uh, answered already over there. So we know already that there are countable and uncountable, right? Nouns. Now, we, this is the topic that we are going to study today, adverbs of quantity. For example, we have some... Um, adverbs of quantity, we use it to express if it is a lot of or yeah. a few of something, right? For example, it says there are too many cars. There should be fewer cars. We need more subway lines and there aren't enough buses. So we use some adverbs of quantity with countable nouns and some others, some others adverbs with uncountable. So too many, fewer more and enough are for countable nouns. And we have the other adverbs, right? For uncountable or non-count nouns. There is too much traffic. There should be less pollution. We need more public transportation and there isn't enough parking. So over there we have like a table in which we can see the different adverbs that we have mentioned before for countable and uncountable. Too many, fewer, more, and enough is for countable. And uncountable, too much, less, more, and enough. So more and enough is for both, right? It doesn't matter. Can be countable, can be uncountable. But we have to be careful with too many and too much, right? Too many is for countable and too much is for uncountable and fewer right fewer and less fewer fewer people fewer cars um and less is for uncountable like less less water less pollution right etc so do we have questions right now about this or everything is clear do you have any question no right everything Enough. is Yes, do you have How questions? Is, your, uh, uh -huh. is enough, enough a uh, use only uh, and uh, co uh, uh, count only plural and for uh, yeah, no count a uh, plural? For example, this, this is, a, is this a, a, to use a question too? Or yes. Positive. Yes, we can use it in questions. We can uh, use it in negative statements. We can use uh -huh. it in affirmative. Yes, very good question. Very good question. So we can use the those adverbs in questions, negative, affirmative statements. Yes, we can use it. Right? When we are going to see more examples right now in which we can use it. Also, we have formulas. If you have seen the platform um they have explained that in the platform you can check it there also but we are going to study it right now so for example as you mentioned before we have formulas for adverse of quantity this is just to know where to place it in a, in a statement or in a sentence so, solo para saber donde tenemos que ponerlo tenemos los las fórmulas verdad donde tenemos que poner el adverbio de cantidad for example there are uh, there are too many cars. That is an affirm affirmative sentence, right? There are too many cars. So we have there plus the verb to be plus too many and plus the count noun, right? Also, we have uh, the other one that says should. That is like a recommendation. When you use should is a recommendation. Es una opinión. Es una recomendación que le podemos hacer a alguien. Si usamos should. For example, subject plus should, plus verb, plus fewer or more, right? Plus a count, a count noun or countable noun. And we have the example there, right? There should be fewer cars. We should have more police officers. 
without over there, we can use it in affirmative. Over there below, we have a negative statement. There aren't plus enough plus, plus count now, not, right? There aren't enough buses. There aren't enough police officers. Enough es suficiente, ¿verdad? ¿Qué quiere decir ahí? Que no hay suficientes. ¿Qué? Buses o policías, police officers. So that is like uh, something that we can, we can express with quantity, adverbs of quantity. And also we have here, um, let's see. Yes, um, it's another formula with should and with too much. That is for uncountable. This is for uncountable nouns. There should be less pollution, right? So we have always the formula subject plus should plus verb plus less or more plus the noun count noun. And the next uh, formula is subject plus verb plus too much or enough plus the noun countable noun. And we have different examples. There is too much traffic. There is too much pollution. There isn't enough parking. So all of that, we have just to follow the, the formula. So do you have questions right now about this, about the formulas? This is just to organize your ideas, the words, right, in a statement. Questions? Questions about this? No questions, everything's clear. Okay, perfect, everything's clear. That's okay, that's good. Tiene apagado el micrófono. Sorry, sorry. So, thank you, Gabriela. Thank you. So, right now, uh, we are going to have a little exercise here, as I was saying before, but you were not, you were not able to listen to me. So, um, I'm going to show you a sentence, and you're going to choose if it is um, the correct option. You're going to choose the correct option, okay? For example, this is food, right? Food is uncountable or, or countable? Food. Countable. Countable? Uncountable? Okay, we, we have to know that. That's the first thing that we have to know, right? If it is countable or if it is uncountable. That's the first thing because depending on that, we're going to use the adverb. Now, it says here, choose the correct <clears throat> option. I ate. Too much food or too many food? Too much. Too much food? I, to, I ate too much. I ate too much. Remember that if we use too much, is for uncountable. And if we use too many, is for countable. Too many. So it's too many or too much? For me, too many. Yes. For you, too, much, too many, too many, many food. Okay, so we have different opinions. You see, you have too different many. opinions. Too many. Some people, another people, another person said too many. So we are kind of confused right now. Okay, we have. We just said that. We have said that. Teacher. So, yes. Teacher. Yes. Go ahead. Teacher. Who is speaking? Uh, I think it's. You think it's countable? Okay, we are going to see right now. Food for me, for me depends. Why? Depends on the vision, the opinion, and the, uh, because I I ate I ate too many food. If if I ate too 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 partial. To leg, leg, leg mm -hmm. chicken, yes. leg chicken to to leg, but yeah. is is generally uh, I for me and you know and, and my opinion <laughs> I ate too much I I don't know in uh, I speak uh, I speak in general uh, in this mm -hmm. case but I ate for me too many I say two two piece chicken uh, two piece chicken uh, the pieces of chicken uh, teacher, yeah. yes uh, for this case i think uh, 
eight much. Uh, full, think it's so much. the full is uncountable. Okay, okay, very good, very good analysis. Thank you, Rufino. Thank you, Luis. Because it is true, right? It depends on the sense of the words that we are using because portions, we can count portions. One portion, two portions, also pieces, right? Or hamburgers, we can count that. But food in general, it's uncountable, right? So we, first we need to know if it is countable or uncountable. Food is general, so we cannot count food like the word food. We cannot say one food two foods, three foods, we cannot say that. So we are going to use too much, right? I ate too, too much food, food. too much eat. food, exactly. So next one, let's see next one. Money, right? Money. I used to earn fewer money in my previous job or I used to earn less money in my previous job. Less money. Less, less money. money in my previous year. Less money. Okay, remember, if we use less, is for uncountable, right? And if we use fewer, is for countable. So for you, money is not countable, right? We cannot count money. Less money. Less money, okay. So we have there less money. Exactly, money in general. We cannot count one money, two monies. We can count bills, right? Or we can count coins. One bill, two dollars, right? Three dollars, four dollars. But money, no, right? So the best option or the correct option, let's say this, I used to earn less money in my previous job. So less money. Teacher, yes. Can we make a parenthesis here? The, the word... Money. How? What? What is the correct pronunciation? So, uh, I I hear that in K means like money. What? What is the the correct pronunciation? What is the correct pronunciation? Because you're breaking a little bit. What is the correct yes. pronunciation? Yeah. Money. Uh, so, for this word, money or money. Okay, it's mm. money, right? Money, because in, in Spanish, we, we see the O, right? Ah, money. money, money, no. Money, no, it's money, money. So it's like money order, right? Money order is not money order, right? It's money, money. order. Yeah. yeah, money. So it, the correct pronunciation money. is money. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. Now we are going to have another example, right? Another Thank exercise. Pizza, right? Pizza. And it says, there is too much cheese in this pizza or there is too many cheese in this pizza. There is too much cheese. Too much. Too much. Too much cheese. Okay, so cheese, we cannot count cheese, right? Or can we? No, right, right. Okay, very good. So the correct answer is too much. Exactly. There is too much cheese in this pizza. Exactly. Very good. Now we are learning, right? We need to know if it is countable or uncountable. Cars, right? We have uh, the sentence, there are, and uh, now it's different. There are too many cars in my city or there aren't too many cars. There are or there aren't? There are. There yeah. are, there right? Are. There are. There are many my, cars in my city. There are too many cars in my city. Yes, that's San Salvador around noon, right? Or a 6 p.m., yeah. right? It's horrible. <laughs> it's Five o'clock. Five o'clock, yeah, it's horrible. Yes. Everybody to the school with the kids, time, to their teacher? jobs. Yes, yes. <laughs> all the time, Today right? All the time. All the, yes, it is true. It's not like... Yeah. Before, right, like some hours, but now it's every, every, every hour. Every hour. <laughs> okay, there are, there are too many cars in my city, okay? Very good. Next one. In my city, there is enough pollution to get sick or there isn't enough pollution to get sick. There is. 
there oh. is, right? Because we can see that the cars, they if there are many cars, we have a lot of smoke and everything. So there is there is enough pollution to get sick. So you, we can see that we can use enough yeah, in an affirmative in an affirmative way, right? We can use it. It's not only negative. It, we can use it in a, an affirmative way also. Uh, we have more cars. There should be fewer traffic in my city or there should be less traffic in my city. Less. There less. should be less, less, less traffic. traffic in my city. Less traffic, okay, let, let me see here. Exactly, there should be less traffic because we can count cars, but we cannot count traffic, right? Very good, now we have learned something today, very good. Now, let me see here, activity. What should be less or more in your city? Use adverse or frequency. For example, there should be more taxis and fewer cars in my city. There should be more parks and green areas in my city. There should be less pollution and littering in my neighborhood. There should be fewer billboards on the streets. So there should be is for an opinion to express an opinion. For example, I think that in every city, like everybody is getting a car or two cars, families that are getting like two or three cars. And now we have a lot of cars. So I, in my opinion, there should be less, less cars in our city. It's kind of complicated. Yes, I know. But there should be more uh, transportation means, right? To travel. So what do you think? What do you think there should be more in your city? Like more schools, more museums, or uh, less less noise. I don't know if you live in a noisy neighborhood. Um, yes, I guess. So uh, tell me one opinion that there should be more or less of something in your city. Can you tell me something that you like or you don't like about your city? Me, teacher? Yes, go ahead. Uh, there should be more security in my city. There should be more security in your city. Very good. Do you do you do you think that we live in a secure city or insecure city right now nowadays? Security in my city. More security in your city. You live in a yeah. insecure area. Yeah. Okay, but nothing... like in in San Salvador, mm -hmm. when you when you go on the bus, it's dangerous, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's dangerous. So, but but nothing has happened to you, like recently, so, let's say. So I stole my cell phone. <laughs> Somebody stole your cell phone. Yeah. And now you have a new cell phone, or? Yeah, a new. Okay, cell phone. and that that happened recently, or that was a long time ago. Uh, three months three months ago. Three months ago, and yeah. did you did you see they they like try to mug you or or you didn't no, notice it i didn't see. you didn't see it you, you just where's yeah. my phone and that's it yeah <laughs> i have lived that experience too so i'm so sorry for you but it's good that you have a new you were you were able to get a new phone so we we have we, yeah. we live in some areas they are insecure also so there should yeah. be more security security is countable or uncountable it's uncountable. Uncountable. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Another another uh, volunteer that can express your feelings about your city. Coach. Okay. And to, to be honest, in my country, in my city, there should be more highways because the traffic in the morning is terrible. Since five a.m. to six or seven a.m. It's terrible. Yes, it's terrible. It's, yes, it's impossible to to yes. drive or to to travel right to another area. Yes, it's, so there should be pango. more soya pango. Yes, <laughs> soya pango. <laughs> there should be more more street, more highways, right? More. Yes. Okay, that's a very good logic opinion. Um, so thank you. Probably there should be more another way to travel, right? Not only cars, but also I don't know. Probably we can build something in the future to travel in a secure way and faster, right? 
So another volunteer. Do we have another volunteer? Let me see, no volunteers. Let me see, we will have just one more. Paola, Paola, are you there? Yes, teacher. Okay, can you tell me something that there should be more in your city? There my city mm -hmm. and there shall be more um, uh, the police. Police. The police and police. and and my um, security. More security more and more security. More police, more police. Yeah. Okay, so that's a, a common problem, right, in different areas right nowadays. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So police is uh, general, in general, but police officers, we can count, right, police officers. So remember that when we are talking in a general way, like food, traffic, parking, that's uncountable. And we are talking about the specific, like, things like parking spaces, cars, police officers, we can count that. We are going to continue right now that we have expressed our feelings about our city. And you, Stella, you want to participate, Stella? There should be river dog on the street. Dog. The dogs. Uh huh. Dogs. Why? Because it's more. It's very. Triste. It's very sad. what? It's very sad. See? Eh, es muy triste ver muchos perritos abandonados. It's sad to see a lot of abandoned dogs, right? A lot of abandoned dogs. Yeah, and it's kind of dangerous also, right? Because some of them can attack you. And also, well, it's not very good with animals. So yeah, there should be fewer fewer dogs on the streets. I agree with you, Estella. Very good, very good point. Okay, thank you for your participation. Now we are going to continue with a different topic, right? It says indirect questions. We are going to read this conversation and we are going to practice later on, right? It says, excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There is one upstairs near the food court. Do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure, just follow the signs of transportation. Do you know how much the bus costs? Yes, it's 50 cents. Do you know where the bookstore is? Yes, go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. So what is an ATM? Do you know what an ATM is? Do you know what an ATM is? Cajero, cajero, automático. cajero automático. Exactly, cajero automático. ATM, that, that's how we know it in English. So we can see a conversation between two people. Probably you have here you have heard this conversation already if you studied in the platform. And we can see a lot of questions. We have indirect questions questions do you know what an indirect question is do you have an idea about indirect it's questions it's a question polite more it's a, polite yeah. question it's a question to be more polite yes it's more formal also so that is an indirect question right over here we have examples about indirect questions right it says um, we have WH questions, can be indirect questions, and also uh, just no questions, right? But most of it, WH questions. For example, is where is the bank? Where are the restrooms? That is a direct question, right? Because I'm, I'm talking directly, I'm, I'm being like assertive, right? And an indirect question is, could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the restrooms are? 
So first of all, we can see that it, they begin with something extra, right? Like, can you tell me? Could you tell me? Do you know? Right? And then is the question, right? That is like the indirect question. We have it with do also, right? How often do the buses leave? Uh, and the indirect question is, can you tell me how often the buses leave? We have another uh, question, direct questions. What time does the bank open? And the indirect question is, do you know what time the bank opens? And another example, when did fly 566 arrive? Do you know when fly 566 arrive? So an indirect questions are more formal and polite in a direct question. The difference is that the verb goes after the sentence as it will in a positive sentence. And we have another example. Where is the bus stop? Donde esta la parada de buses? Excuse me, could you tell me where the bus stop is? Perdón, ¿me podría decir dónde está la parada de buses? Entonces, esa es la diferencia. It's more formal, right? It's more formal, yes. It's more formal. So, what is confusing here and is kind of difficult to practice is the order, right? Because as you can mm -hmm. see, it says, could you tell me where the bus stop is? And here in the direct question is, where is the bus stop? If you can see here, the is is at the end in the indirect question, right? Is that the end? Why? Because first we have already created the question. So this one is like a normal sentence, right? So could you tell me where the bus stop is? It's incorrect if we say, could you tell me where is the, where is the bus stop? That is incorrect. So we have to be careful with that. So could you tell me where the bus stop is? That is correct. But if we say, could you tell me where, where is the bus stop? No. Okay. Right now uh, in my, my city, right? In my city in Santa Ana, it started to rain. It's raining in your city also, or no, it's not raining? How it's is the raining. weather? It's raining, it's right? Not it's not? Raining. It's not raining. It's not, okay. In my city it's raining right now, so. Uh, hopefully you will be able to hear me, right? If it is like stronger storm. So uh, to, to write in the correct way, the order for indirect questions, we always have formulas, right? For example, where is the bank? That is direct, right? And then we have the formula. They begin with, can you tell me? Could you tell me? Do you know? And then the w, WH word, where, right? Where, the subject, the bank, and then the verb. At the end goes the verb, right? Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the restrooms are? And also we have here, right? Do you know WH word, subject plus verb? Do you know what time the bank opens? The bank opens. So every time we use this structure, right, with indirect questions. And we can notice an indirect question when we say, do you know? Can you tell me? Could you tell me, right? That's an indirect question, okay? Remember the, the structure, WH, subject plus verb, or uh, do you know plus WH plus subject plus verb, right? It's the same, it's the same. So the verb goes at the end. Acti I'm sorry, activity, transform the following direct questions into indirect questions. Vaya, vamos a transformar las uh, preguntas directas en indirectas. Ustedes me van a decir, if you have a book, you can practice there, right? For example, the first, the first one, how much does the taxi cost? Transform that into an indirect question, please. Do you know how much does the taxi cost? Do you know how much does the taxi cost? Okay, very good. Um, do you know how much does the taxi cost? Podría. Yes, go ahead. Could could you could you tell me? Could you tell me how much how much the taxi cost? Yeah. Exactly. 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 Remember the formula. 
Uh, first we had, do you know? Oh, and then it's friend. how much, how much, the WH much. word, right? You know how much? Subject, the taxi, cost, right? Do you okay. know how much the taxi cost? Do you know how much does the taxi cost? No, we don't have a does here. We already have the auxiliary here, right? And do you know? Okay. So we cannot use two auxiliaries. That's that's why these indirect questions are tricky. They are confusing. And sometimes we tend to make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes. But we are lear learning right now, right? It's okay. Thank you, Rufino. And thank you, Jenny, for participating. So we are going to transfer the next one. This one is how much... Do you know how much the taxi cost? cost. And taxi cost is with an S, right? Because it's a third person singular, costs. Cut. Cost. Costs, exactly. The next one is, where should I go shopping? Where should I go shopping? Transform that into an indirect question. Transform it, please. Could you tell me? Uh-huh. Where should I go shopping? Could you tell me? Very good. Could you tell me? That's okay. Where? The WH. And then after where? Where does it go? Should or subject? Remember the subject. formula, okay? Subject. I, exactly. I. Subject, teacher. Subject. Subject. So... Could you tell me where I, and then the rest, I should go shopping. I should go shopping, exactly. I should. It's kind of difficult, right? It's kind of difficult, but we are getting there. Next one, where can I get a map? That is the question, where can I get a map? So transform that into an indirect question. Yes, it can uh, begin with, can you tell me, or do you know, could you tell me? Could you tell me where I get a map? Okay, could you tell me, and then the WH, where, and where? then the subject, what I is the subject? Can. I, I can. can. Exactly. I can, can you tell me where I can get a map? Can exactly. Map. I, I can get a map. Exactly. It's like a positive or an affirmative statement, right? It's like that at the end. Exactly. And the last one, where's a good place to meet people? Where is a good place to meet people? Could you tell me? Uh-huh. Where is... Could you tell me where exactly? Yes, very where? good. Yes, where and then where the subject, right? What is the subject there? Where it is where? a good place to it. meet people. Where you? What is the subject? It. It. Where is it? Meet. Meet. It is. No, it. meet is the mm. verb, right? Is it verb? Yes, it's, it's the infinitive verb. So it's kind of complicated, but it's we're getting there. The so, subject is place. Exactly, place. So place. can you tell me where a good place, a good place. to meet people, to meet people is, is is at the end? Is. Okay. Remember the the, the formula, right? Do is. you know WH subject know. and the verb, right? At the end, the is exactly is okay. and then the question mark. So we are going to see here right now. These are the, the answers. Let me see here. How much does the taxi cost? Do you know how much the taxi costs? Where should I go shopping? Could you tell me where I should go shopping? Where can I get a map? Can you tell me where I can get a map? And where is a good place to meet people? Do you know where a good place to meet people is? So that yes. is the indirect question, okay? Very good. You did it very good because it's complicated, right? It's complicated to, to create the, the sentences. 
Now an activity. Create a conversation using indirect questions. Your student A will be a local and student B will be a foreigner in a city. Student A will ask about places, how to get to those places, general information about the city. And student B will provide information and ask general information also. Okay, so we have 10 minutes. What I want you to do is to create a conversation like this one, okay? Like, excuse me, where is the nearest ATM? Or can you tell me where the park is? With indirect questions, right? Um, and then you provide the information. The, the park is on the corner or the park, you need to take the bus to go to the park. Something easy, right? You don't have to complicate yourself with, you have to go there and you then you have to take the taxi and then across in front of the bank, you will see the store. No, it's like very easy. What you have to practice here is just the indirect questions. Um, I don't know if you want to practice with somebody else. I can create a rooms and you can practice like five minutes. And then after those five or yes, five, five minutes, we can, we can continue with, uh, with, with, uh, with the practice, right? With the practice of this conversation. Is that okay for you? Or do you want to do it by yourself and practice it right now? Did you get the idea? <laughs> Ok, the idea is create a, a, a conversation, right? Vamos a crear una conversación. Ok? Using indirect questions. Vamos a usar preguntas indirectas. Like this one, ok? Can you tell me where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Exactly. All of, the, all of those. And you will uh, try to talk about that. But we can do it. We can practice it in, in pairs, right? Vamos a trabajar en parejas en rooms. ¿O lo quieren practicar ya? Yeah, we can practice. Right now? Yeah. Right now. Okay. So we're going to do this. We are going to follow this structure, okay? That's why we have this structure here. Vamos a seguir esta estructura. Una persona le va a preguntar una pregunta indirecta y la otra persona le va a contestar. Y luego la otra persona le va a responder con otra pregunta indirecta y le va a contestar la otra persona. And that's it, okay? One question, one answer. And then the other person, one question, one answer. Okay, so we are going to start right now. And I want volunteers. And then I will choose, okay? I will choose. One volunteer, two people right now. Me. Me. Patricia, and who else? ¿Quién más con Patricia? Who else? Another volunteer? We have a lot of people here. Let me see. We have Crisia, we have Astrid, we have Hugo, we have Gabriela, we have Angela, we have Alejandra. Who wants to participate with, with uh, Patricia? Who wants to participate? Raise your hand. Patricia and Angela. Angela, okay. Angela, yes, I can hear you, Angela. Okay. Okay, who will begin, Angela or Patricia? Me. Okay, Patricia. Okay, remember, follow this structure. One question, one answer, okay? Okay. Excuse me, can you tell me where the supermarket is? Um, I don't know if I'm, if my, uh, the screen is stuck because I have not that conversation. You don't see the conversation? 
No. What do you see right now? Uh, excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest ATM is? Ah, okay, yes, yes, but we can use that as an example, right? But we can create our own um, questions, right? So we can create our own uh, questions like change it, right? And she's asking you where is the nearest uh, supermarket, right? So you can say it's, it's next to the park. You can invent or you can create uh, okay. your own answer. Okay. Uh, well, uh, can you repeat me the question, please? Yes, repeat it, please, Patricia. Can you tell me where the supermarket is? The, the supermarket is in the corner of this uh, street. Thank you. Your no. microphone is on. Sorry, sorry. Now, now Angela. Uh, ask Patricia an indirect question, please. Okay. Uh, uh, Patricia, could you tell me? Uh, could you tell me? I don't know. Could you tell me? <laughs> could you tell me uh, the? Could you tell me the time, please? Okay. Um, it's eight, eight o'clock, <laughs> nine o'clock. It's nine o'clock. Okay, very good. So, in an indirect question, how can we change? For example, if I say Patricia, a uh, direct question is Patricia, what time is it? What time is it, right? What time is it? But indirect question, Patricia, can you tell me what time it is, right? What time it is. Very good. Thank you, Angela. Now I want two other people, two other volunteers. That's it. That's what we are going to do right now. Hey, teacher. I am. Okay, Luis. Now your headset is okay. You, you're able to speak, right? Okay. Okay. And who is going to practice with Luis? Mr. Urias. Volunteers? Me, I try. <laughs> Rufino. Rufino, okay, Rufino. Okay. Go ahead, who will begin? Who will begin? I begin. Excuse Okay, Luis, you okay. can begin. Me. Excuse me, Rufino, who? can you tell who me? Who begin? Who begin? Luis, Luis, Mr. Urias will begin and then you continue, Rufino, okay? Okay. Excuse me, Rufino, can you tell me where is the nearest bank is? Uh, in this, in my, in my, uh, my city, uh, in my community is, there is a bank. There isn't in a bank. My, in, in my community is. There is, is there, a bank. There is there a is. bank. There is no bank. Okay, that's a okay. that's an answer. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay. So can you tell me where the bank is? Right. Okay. Very good. Now, Mr. Rufino, ask an indirect question to Mr. Rias, please. Excuse me, Mr. Rias. Uh, can you tell me uh, is um the nearest gas station is? Um and to take uh, the one street, two block, turn left, and the corner. Okay. Very good, Mr. Rias, very good. Okay, so, and the next block, you, 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 you turn to the left and it will be a gas station. Okay, very good. Gas very station, good. yes. Gas Thank station, you. very good. Okay, we cannot remember that indirect questions, we can use it for different things, not only for address or the city. For example, I can ask, um, for example, Claudia, can you tell me when your birthday is, right? Or um, Rufino, can you tell me what your last name is? So we have indirect questions for um, every question that we can use, right? Um, do you know where... 
when the, the class ends, right? For example, do you know what time the class ends? And what time does the class ends? Right now, right? 8.55. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we are going to finish the class. Congratulations. I want to say thank you for your effort for this first week. Hopefully we are going to continue the second win, the third week, and then you are going to see that we are going to finish this um, intermediate English. If you have any suggestions, you can write me or you can write to, 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 my, to my number from WhatsApp, right? You can tell me suggestions or something that you would like to practice and I will try to bring it to the class. So let's see. Yes, I guess that's the end of the class. Yes, exactly, yes. So. Uh, have a good weekend and take care, okay? I will see you on Monday, okay? I have a question. Teacher, teacher. Yes, question. See yes. you Monday, teacher. teacher. One, one question. Yes. It, it is uh, possible that you can send us to the WhatsApp group this class. This, like the presentation? One... Do you want yes, the yes, please. Yes, yes, I can I can send it to to the group. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. I will you. appreciate that. Okay, no problem. No problem. Another question Thank or you, that's it. That's it, teacher. That's, that's it. it. Thank okay. you. We're going to have a good practicing. weekend. Have a good Thank weekend, you. you too. Rest. You too. Yeah, have, have a nice weekend. Um, Thank you. Thank you. All right, you heard. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye.